Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's case is about a 67-year-old lady who complained of neck and lower back pain. Her MRI revealed a relatively well-defined lobulated lesion measuring 2.5 into 1.5 centimeters in the right half of the spinal canal at D2, D3 intervertebral disc level. There was a possibility of intramedullary component with an exophytic component. The lesion showed marked enhancement on post-contrast study with variable heterogeneity in the center of the lesion. Subtle suspicious dural tail of enhancement was noted along the inferior aspect of the lesion. MRI findings were suggestive of spinal hemangioblastoma in view of the phloids. The second possibility was spinal meningioma as the dural tail was noted and it was an intradural extramedullary lesion. The third possibility suggested by the radiologist was schwannoma with diffuse cord effusion and the fourth possibility was metastasis. We received in lab few irregular brownish soft tissue pieces which aggregated to 1.8 into 1 into 0.8 centimeters. The histopathology revealed typically a lobulated lesion with fibrocollagenous tissue and numerous vascular channels which were capillary type and they were tightly or compactly placed and some were dilated like they were cavernous type and these were lined by benign endothelial cells. The intervening mesenchymal stroma showed proliferation of fibroblasts and mixed inflammatory infiltrate was noted. Now one must see, look for the foamy stromal cells. These were absent in our case, so we ruled out the possibility of a hemangioplastoma. So we gave a diagnosis of a hemangioma in the D2, D3 lesion. Now let's have discussion about the hemangiomas and the vascular malformations. Hemangiomas are benign neoplastic vascular lesions with multiple tightly packed capillary sized and cavernous vessels. These may be isolated, multiple or a part of PIC 3 ca related overgrowth syndrome. Now coming to localization, uh, in spine they have, a, they preferentially affect the thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae. They are often multiple and may involve the vertebral bodies, pedicles, arches and the spinous processes. Less frequently they occur in the skull and the brain parenchyma. The vascular malformations are of three types. Cavernous malformations, cerebral arteriovenous malformations and capillary telentectasia. The cavernous malformations are angiographically occult, solitary or rarely multifocal vascular anomalies. They favor the supratentorial location. Now these are, this could be multiple tightly packed sinusoidal vessels with fibrotic walls lacking arterial or venous features. They may contain little or no CNS tissue. These are sporadic, so they may show the KRIT1 mutations or may be familiar. The cerebral arteriovenous malformations, these are fast flowing vascular anomalies consisting of arteriovenous connections through nidus or a fistula. They are typically located in the meninges, cortical regions and the deep brain. In spinal cord, AVMs may be extradural, intradural or may have or may be intramedullary. These may also occur in cornus medullaris. Now these are typically sporadic and may show KRAS and BRAF mutations. The intervening brain parenchyma shows gliosis between the blood vessels, malformed blood vessels. Coming to the third, capillary telangiectasias. These are aggregations of individually dispersed, dilated, capillary type of blood vessels with interposed normal brain parenchyma and these have predilection for the pons. Clinical features of vertebral hemangiomas, 
Now these hemangiomas, they may occur in 10 to 12 percent of general population. The males are predominantly affected. They may be asymptomatic. However, some may lead to vertebral compression fractures inducing compressive myelopathies. And if it occurs in pregnancy, it is detected in pregnancy, then it may induce progression of the disease. Now coming to imaging findings on CT scan, the vertebral hemangiomas may show a typical polka dot honeycomb or corduroy pattern. On MRI, they are hyper intense on T1 and T2 weighted images and on post contrast study, these show enhancement. The intraosseous hemangiomas could be congenital or develop de novo due to some trauma and they may be part of a syndromes such as PIC 3CA related overgrowth syndrome. Hemangiomas of the neuraxis have good prognosis and they usually do not recur after complete surgical excision. I hope you are liking the cases I present. So please like, share my cases and also subscribe my video channel. And you can uh, let me know in the comment box if you would like me to discuss any specific case. Thank you very much.